two examples in a minute. Anything else you want to share uh, about anything, current events or whatever, before we get into those questions? I just know there's an amazing uh, social media uh, oh, launch right. happening. I think it may be even already starting or about to start right now from uh, number 45. Uh, if you haven't checked out, you, you should probably go to his website and find out about it. But we are going to have so much freedom right now coming with all of us to be in contact with number 45. Woohoo! Yeah, awesome. no, I, I think it's that's probably the most exciting thing I could say is happening is. right now. Um, it's going to be like almost not the devil's worst nightmare, but pretty close to it is about yeah. to happen. <laughs> yeah, it's called his, his uh, social media is called Truth Social. And they originally said it was going to come on towards the end of February. And now they're saying some beta versions, which means some people will be testing it. That's the beta. Yeah, word. they'll be testing it Now they're it right saying now. that it will actually come on the end of March, which is disappointing because I wanted it now, you know. But I but think it decides how the tests go, Steve. I think if the yeah. tests go great, I think it will be launched much quicker than that. Oh, good. That would be awesome. Awesome. And they're saying, you know, they're not going to shadow ban. Shadow banning is when you write something and you know, and it starts to get a lot of play and your friends are liking it and all of a sudden no one likes it anymore it just stops not a new likes or an ad that's called shadow banning that's what facebook does uh and when they don't like what you're doing they shadow ban it they make it go away so that they're not sharing it with all your friends like they're supposed to that's right. and, and you don't know the difference because there's nothing you can see that says you've been shadow banned it just stops yeah. You know, and so Truth Social is not going to do that. They're not even going to do that on the left. They're going to let people say, even on Truth Social, what they want to say. So it's going yeah. to become very, very popular very fast. Yes. So, well, okay. Anything else before we get into these questions? I just want to make sure I give you. I, I just want to say, I know this is not Valentine's Day, but here where we live in our, our household and in our office, we actually will celebrate a holiday for a whole week. So oh. we're still going full strength with Valentine's Day, right? Awesome. Uh, the week yeah. of love, that's what we call it. And this is actually my Valentine's scarf I'm wearing right now. It just happens nice. to match my pink hair, which awesome. goes well with Valentine's Day. So awesome. I just want to say we love you. We thank all of you for the prayers, for the support, for the, for the, the true prophets to have a place to speak. We thank especially... Steve Schultz and Elijah Streams and all their amazing team members who are about to get some sweets set personally for me. All I hope right. you enjoy it. I will pray they don't get addicted to it because it's amazing. <laughs> uh, I'll share that on another show, but um, we will eventually have this sweet, this delicacy actually on our store. I call them fudgies, um, but they're all handmade by me. All of your team out there, Steve Schultz, nice. you need to the anointing in every one of them. So we love you. We really appreciate you. All those, I tell you, I just started going through cards again last night and saw all the states that are wow. sending stuff to us information. And almost every one of them is thanking the Elijah stream. So again, I ask you, please make sure you support him. I'm just going to start from the beginning. But we have a powerful Thank show you. today. Make sure you maybe take notes. Yeah, because be this, is, this is a great time when you've been living in Revelation, especially as long as I have, you learn things that really do work against the enemy. So um, we can go ahead and get started. Yeah, let's, let's, let's jump into that question because I don't know. Take as long as you want on this. You don't have to rush through because we have other questions. Just take whatever time you need to do this. Okay. But there's here's two actual um, situations. We're obviously not saying names, but there's a father who was a good father. He raised his family. Uh, he and his wife, I think. Um, I just, I'm going to avoid saying things in case someone's listening and it might be. Um, yeah. Uh, identify. So he, his, he and his wife were married 25 years. All was well. And then he discovered marijuana. And then not only did yeah. he discover marijuana, but he discovered and he went out and found the highest potency marijuana with the highest level of THC. Uh, and Kat, his brain is just almost fried. He doesn't know. He's suddenly an enemy to his wife. He suddenly says, you've always been this evil, bad person. Uh, yeah. He was in the car. I'm told he was in the car like last week or recently and threatened his wife. If you don't stop confronting me on this marijuana, I'm going to drive this car off the road and kill us both. And this is a man who was a Christian. And all of that happened. Now, so now, Kat, so, and I'll tell you the other one in a second, but he is not in his right mind to even right. confront. Okay, so that's that one. 
Um, now, the other one, and I'm sure there were other details, but we won't give too many because I don't want to identify. Yeah, this you don't need is, a whole lot. Just let people know um, these things will affect your mind, and they'll tell you they never will. But uh, I lived through a time, I lived through the 60s when a lot of drugs were introduced, and I'll go into that in a minute. So go ahead and share yeah. the other scenario. Yeah, so here's the other one. There's a family raised several children. Uh, all to all were baptized, all were raised to love the Lord, all got married loving the Lord. And one of them, the couple, the son and daughter-in-law, out of nowhere, just started becoming Buddhist. They started putting mm -hmm. up Buddhist paraphernalia. They started, then they added crystals to it. And they just became Buddhist out of nowhere. And and so how is a Christian, so that, that we, you know, hitch with, hit whichever one of these you want to first. But of course, the generic question is, what's a parent supposed to do? They're going, didn't we, did we do something wrong? Did we, you know, that kind of thing. So I'm going to throw that to you and see what you have to, to say about that. Well, first of all, I want to say this, um, especially if these family members of yours uh, ever gave themselves to Jesus. Now, I'm not saying the others don't have a chance to come back. But if they ever gave themselves to Jesus Christ, even as a child, you know what that does? He puts his mark on them. And he and he, he won't lose them. He won't let them get lost. And I know for years we had a family member who was kind of doing that, not like a sibling or something. They were, they were doing some of the same stuff we just talked about. And God said, uh, you can't stop what you're doing to go after them. You will be the last person to convince these people there's something wrong with them. Uh, you'll be the last one that they'll even listen to, probably not want to listen to, as, as he um, said in the first scenario. Uh, they don't want to hear from you, number one, your family member. And God can send other people. But the point is this. If they gave themselves to Jesus Christ, he doesn't abandon them just because they abandon the walk with him or even who he is and decide to go in a different direction. He is not going to let them be lost, okay? He is going to go after them. It says in the Bible that he is actually married to the backslider, okay? That's another wow. word. Wow. Today. That's who we would call these people. Uh, if they lived righteously, they gave themselves to Jesus Christ, you know, had a real commitment. And children, let me tell you, you can't tell me they don't. I got born again at four. It was such a dramatic, wow. a traumatic, not dramatic, dramatic experience for me being a seer that when I invited him, I actually saw Jesus step inside of me. Even children at a very young age, it is important to introduce Jesus Christ to them and even pray with them to know him. Because let me tell you, it puts something in your spirit that even they can't make leave. And the, why, the reason why this is important is the whole time your family members are out there, we just call it going rogue because that means they've gone off the track. They've left where they were. Uh, I'm talking about spiritually, emotionally, physically, and even mentally. Uh, drugs, um, alcohol, um, being involved in spiritual darkness will all begin to alter who you are and how you think because your soul is impacted. It really is all about your soul. But if you ever gave yourself to Jesus, and if you're listening right now and you, you're going through this yourself, you're one of the rogues, I can say lay down, roll over, and give up because <laughs> Jesus Christ is going to get you. Okay, your family's not going to give up on you. Those in heaven who know you aren't giving up on you, you may as well just give up and get rid of the darkness and get rid of uh, the evil that's impacted your life because you, you belong to Jesus Christ still. Wow. Okay, so that's the number one thing you need to know because that helps to bring peace to people. You know, you can't necessarily stop what's happening with them. Of course, you pray and ask Jesus to rescue them, and that's wonderful. But when you yourself are given weapons in the Word and by Jesus Christ to come after and crush the darkness that is surrounding them, and number one, of course, will be the host of heaven to send them to pull down strongholds. When the enemy can't get you, and this is the absolute truth, when the enemy, that would be Satan, okay? We're not talking about a person. We're talking about an ent a spiritual entity, uh, Satan, who iniquity was found and born in him. By the way, just so you know, God didn't make Satan. He made Lucifer, who was a powerfully anointed, beautiful being, who was anointed to lead worship in heaven. He himself chose in his own soul to become evil, and that was born in him. It's the only thing Satan actually invented was evil, uh, if you want to know the truth. And so God didn't make him that way as God didn't make anybody who's going rogue, who's going off the tracks, running after darkness, um, pursuing things that are dangerous to them and then make them not even uh, even sensible in their own mind. Uh, that's what the enemy does. If you're a strong believer, likely you have family members 
or really close people you call family that are involved in being a rogue person out there. Because if the enemy can't get you, can't get you to come to his side, can't get you to live in sin or defile your person or corrupt your mind, you know, or make yourself uh, incomprehensible to even make sense in things. If he can't get you to do that, he'll go after those closest to you. It's just his MO. It's the way he operates. So if you're already prepared and ready, even if you don't have somebody going that way, you'll already know how to take authority over that and what to say about it. So number one, Jesus has got people. And I remember when this one family member we had, we were praying. Jesus said, I have him. He is, he, it was a he. He is in my hand and he's running around doing all the stuff he thinks he wants to do because he's being impacted by Satan. He said, all I'm going to do is I'm going to go like this. And he said, and I'll take them and I will get them back into wow. the kingdom. That's so huge. I could, that was Jesus himself saying that. Wow. And also, I do remember when I was in heaven, one of the times I lived there, Jesus said, let them know that your stand for your family member is the most powerful thing. You can make a stand that they will know Jesus Christ. They will not miss their destiny, that you will be in eternity together. And that person who now is probably, you know, screaming against God or you or family uh, can you imagine you saying that person will become a witness and a testimony to the saving power of Jesus Christ? And those are some of the most powerful words that you can say for anybody you know that has run off and got off the path, jumped off the train, the train has run over them and is dragging them down the tracks. They've gotten that bad. And I know that some people who never even got involved in things, drugs are one of the worst things you can do and i don't care they can lie and fry all day long to say marijuana is not dangerous it is dangerous it's one of the most used drugs and what happens is you get hooked on that and they won't agree with me with this but but i'm sorry i lived in the 60s as a teenager i would go to school and there'd be some other kid who died from drug overdose because it was just being introduced here in this country and they would give it to you for free. They would take you off campus and give it to you and get you hooked on it. And then they would have you sell it to the other students. That's also how the enemy works. And so they would begin to change their nature. Even if they were the star of sports athlete in the school wow. or the smartest kid in school. The first thing you notice was their attitude change, their lifestyle change, how they treated other people changed. It was that quick. It was that quick. And so are you notice things like that going on? Do you just begin to pray against the darkness that, that, that uh, they would begin to notice so God would wake them up, even in the beginning stages of being involved with this stuff? But I want to go to the first scenario uh, that Steve spoke of. Like I said, marijuana is one of, the, one of the worst things that anyone can take. And they can say all they want to, that it's good for you. It is evil. I've known that since I was 16, that it is evil. And all it does is harm to you. And you will get hooked in this whole lie about we're going to make it medicinal so it now can be licensed and now it's being grown everywhere where before they would arrest you if they found you growing that stuff and now they have shops everywhere and i can just tell you this there are hidden rooms i'm just going to tell there's hidden rooms in some of these places where they let you come in and have parties in the, these back rooms and they'll give you stronger stuff than you even wanted but you're, you're already beginning to step into the illegal they said they put a boundary about it but I still don't trust it. I don't trust it and don't believe in it in any way. If you're considering and doing it, don't do it. It's a trap of the enemy. And it's also a trap of man because they will make a lot of money off of you desiring to have this. And then they will introduce you to stronger ones. Oh, and man. I can tell you some of that can be really, some, some people, you know, they may not even live past that first time. Then they would get you hooked on stronger drugs because anything that can alter your mind, which is part of your soul, the way you think, and then it can even alter your will. First, it affects your mind, and then your will, and then your emotions, because that's what your soul is. And, and doing drugs, no matter what type they are, that is exactly how you will be affected. That's why you notice the change in the person, the way they're thinking, what they're talking about, uh, wanting to go off and not show up in places you know, where they're supposed to be. There are little types of signs in that, and it could be something other than that, but many times it is that. And so you want to come against, number one, the effect, the effect of it, whether it's drugs or alcohol. Back in the day before the drugs came, the same thing was happening with alcohol. And you wow. do not want people to drive under the influence is what they call it. That's usually alcohol. Well, you certainly don't want them driving under the influence of drugs. Uh, your mind really gets altered. 
And the devil, the reason why the devil liked that is he can start putting thoughts in their mind if they're inebriated from alcohol or if they're consumed by the drugs that they're, they're taking that are so affecting, it's beginning to alter the way they think. They think that is themselves choosing to think about these things. But when you, when you open up your mind to the enemy, he will begin to bombard you with all kinds of thoughts. Like, you know, wow. you hate these people. These people are against you. They don't have the right to judge you. You just should end your life. I mean, even those thoughts can start real early. So just so you understand how that works and why it's never, ever a good thing to be involved in drugs and uh, not even alcohol. If I'm ever with you, don't you dare offer me a drink. You will be in big trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and can God... I'm not, I will not touch any kind of alcohol. Uh, my dad used to rescue alcoholics. And let me tell you, it mm. ruins your life. And it can also, this, it can affect the unborn even. If you're taking them and you're pregnant, you don't want to do that to your baby. Just so you understand how deadly the enemy's weapons are always going to be fear number one, deception number two, and then any kind of a form of anything he can get you to do, uh, even like some kind of... Um, uh, satanic groups oh, you go wow. into mm. where where you want to be a part of something satanic or, or satanic worship or sacrifices mm. uh, in your own mind as a believer I know you think good and you want good and I, I live that way I want good for everybody I want people to be made whole I want them to be rescued God sent everyone here for a purpose and he loves everybody but some people he can't use because they themselves are choosing uh, to be a part of darkness and the enemy in this time I know there's darkness on the earth by the way it's not the great darkness because I've been taken forward in the times I won't even discuss them into the perilous times which are long 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 away from here no matter what anybody thinks God's beginning something new for greatness but in this time he is exposing darkness and the enemy right now is trying to take as many people as he can destroy as many destinies as he can because in these days of greatness and glory, these very people would be very dangerous against him. So you have to kind of understand how the enemy thinks. And if you're not that kind of a person, you probably aren't. If you're not into crime, you don't have a criminal mind. If you're not into darkness or evil, you're not going to even think, you know, or understand how they think. So the most important thing when people get are, are caught off into these things is to begin to pray over their soul and the way they think. But the number one thing you need to do is just declaring the blood of Jesus over them. You do not have to do it in front of them. This is yeah. the best part of all of this. It's like your covert operations with heaven. And, and let me tell you, the army of heaven is waiting. Holy Spirit is waiting. Uh, when you begin to send them against the strongholds, pulling on your family member is one of the greatest things that you can do. Like I was praying for one of those people uh, last night. And I just said, Father, I take power over all the power of the enemy trying to take and uh, uh, destroy the life of this person, God. I command the army of heaven to go to begin to pull down strongholds being built around this person's mind to affect their soul. And I, I command the host of heaven to shut the mouths of the demons that they can't speak to these people. They cannot influence these people. I speak confusion into the mind of the enemy. This is the spiritual darkness that they will not even be able to communicate with each other. They can't make plans against this person. They will not be able to carry out orders from hell against this person. So I speak confusion into the mind of the enemy. And then I speak to the fear of God to come upon the enemy who is pursuing this person to drag them into darkness, that whatever they attempt to do, it will fail in Jesus' name. These people will not be able to get the drugs that they're running after, that they will all of a sudden, that, that open door will disappear. It will be shut and disappear in Jesus' name, that that supply they've been getting from will be gone in Jesus' name. They will have no way to pursue it, no way to get it in Jesus' name. And I thank awesome. you, Father, right now that we begin to speak in the spirit realm, to that person, to that person, Father, that we, we send the life of God, the love of God, the plans of God to invade wherever they're at right this moment in Jesus' name. And I can tell you, as I speak those words, I see the host leaving. I see Holy Spirit invading the very home of the people who are involved in these things to begin to tear down and pull down strongholds. I can see a stronghold will bring itself totally around somebody and continually bombard their mind with thoughts that aren't from God, are not from God, and are not good thoughts. 
And so I'm going to stop and take a drink real quick. <laughs> well, while you're doing it, let me ask you this one question, Kat. So you're, if I'm her hearing what you're saying and teaching, is that family members probably have a harder time than non-family members reaching someone in this condition, and yet the same family members have an easier time sending the host and praying because their family, God, is right. in a special place, right? You're right. You okay, have really more right. authority in the spirit realm as a family member than anyone else outside your family circle. So if you're a believer, you, it's okay to call other people to pray, but you know what? You are blood related. You're blood related, uh, related by adoption. When there is that time made, you and your words in the spirit realm have a greater impact against the enemy than anyone else out there. So yes, you are the number one person or people who should be coming together to pray over that person to come back to Christ, but also to pray against the darkness. You have the right to cancel their plans. I'm talking about the darkness. You have the right to say, I cancel that assignment against my family member right now in Jesus' name. And I command the host to go and pull down the stronghold, shut the mouths of demons, hinder, halt, and delay, and interfere with them able to get these drugs or alcohol, or whatever it is. Your words are powerful. They're like spears that go out in the, in the, in, into the darkness, begin to pierce the enemy who's, who's trying to do this many times. That first couple times you pray that, you will begin to see a change in that person, wow. especially wow. if this is something that has just started, because the, the biggest demons who are trying to do all this have now been pulled down. I mean, literally, the host will go and pull them away from them. Wow. Uh, they will dispatch them from them uh, and dispel the effects. You can even pray this, declare this, that even when they're taking those drugs, it will have no effect on your family member. Make sure you say their name when you're saying this, that they will have no effect whatsoever, no matter what they try to do. You nullify it. You nullify the effects it's having on your family member. So here you are coming. You're making a stand for their salvation, number one, always. Number two, you're coming against the very darkness that is trying to pull them into the enemy's camp. And number three... If you're speaking against the effect of anything that they're taking or anything they have taken. So there's a three things right there, very important. And it doesn't matter whether it's, I can just say, it doesn't matter if it's drugs, alcohol, pornography, whatever it is, whatever weapon the enemy is trying to destroy the destiny of your family members with, you have power over all of that. What the enemy wants you to do, though, is to get upset, get distraught, then get in tears, break down, because then he's controlling both of you. He's keeping you from being dangerous against him. He's keeping you from standing for that person to come back to Christ. And he wants to do that, trust me. So he's got you over here. He's controlling you and holding you down. And he's still running rampant with your family members. So you have to make sure that you lose all fear, all anger, all, all, all cares, all concerns, you have to loose out of your own soul because then your soul and your mind will think clearly and you can connect okay. with heaven. And if Holy Spirit is asking you to do anything else re, uh, re, you know, related to that, you'll hear him clearly. So number one, to even start this whole operation, I call it covert operation, people. That's what it is. It's, a, it's CWC, covert with Christ. That's what it is. Oh, and, and you can do this. You can do this. If you list all those cares, concerns, and fears from your own soul that the enemy is bombarding you with, because that's not you. That's the enemy trying to get you to think the way he wants you to. And you're thinking clearly. And then you begin to bind to your soul the love, the power, and the blood of Jesus Christ. You're going to become very dangerous against hell. So here you are, number one, speaking and standing on behalf of the salvation that Jesus is not going to give up on those, those who were saved and they, they went astray, you know. Remember the whole thing where he went after the one lamb yeah. that got away from the whole the whole herd of sheep, the flock of sheep, whatever they're called. He went after the one. The others were fine. They were safe. They were supposed to be where they were. But the one who went off to the craziness in this whole scenario in the Bible, that's the one Jesus pursued. So wow, let me tell you, Jesus so is going to be right there with you pursuing that family member 
So here they are. You're allowing Jesus to help you. So when the Satan looks at you, it's like this thing is not going where I wanted it to go. I'm <laughs> losing control. I'm losing the thoughts of that person. I can no longer bombard them because that's been shut off for me. And now here Jesus Christ is getting involved. He's pursuing him. Holy Spirit is pursuing him. So his whole plan, he can see his plan sinking by the day, by the minute. And let me tell you, I would say full force every day for at least a week. Do this, not all day, all night, but do this at least once a day. And say, all right, I'm going to stand in the gap right now and declare. And you understand, first of all, you're standing for the salvation. You're coming against the, the drugs and the effect they, they have on them. And then speak destiny into this person. But there's one more thing you can do that is really powerful. As you all know, John uh, 2.27 says that when you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, you get a deposit of the anointing, and that anointing lives in you. You're never going to stop hearing me. You know, I'm never going to stop talking about the anointing. The anointing breaks the yoke. What yoke? The yoke of any kind of darkness. It breaks the yoke. Uh, Jesus released it everywhere he went. It was in the hem of his garment when that lady touched his garment. When he would go into places, demons would run out because the anointing he carried. But you get a deposit of that when you get born again. It isn't just any anointing. You get a deposit of him. He steps inside of you, but you also get a deposit of that anointing. Anything this person owns or touches as a family member. You have every opportunity to lay your hand on something they would wear. I tell people wow, to shoot wow. good thing. Anything they wear, any doorknob, and you don't have to do it in front of them. This is covert. Remember, covert with Christ. On their bed. Oh, yes, this works really well. Wow. If you lay on their bed, first cleanse it for the kingdom. But if you lay on their bed and you begin to declare dreams and visions of their destiny with Jesus, guess what's going to happen? And they may not tell you this. They will begin in their sleep to have dreams of their destiny with Jesus Christ because the anointing is being released into that bed. Take your hand in their closet and just run across their clothes and say, I release the anointing to break the yoke of darkness over them. Every time they wear something, the anointing will be, they'll be wearing the anointing and what food they're going to eat, wow. release it. And I, we've had people do this for three years in a row. We work with people everywhere about releasing the anointing. You create a cloud of the anointing. It begins to even, even stay outside. There's so much in you. But this family member, every time, if you get to hug them, just release the anointing. Just stay on your breath and release the anointing. But when the anointing gets involved, it brings it into a whole nother level of battle. I'm just telling you right now. The anointing breaks the yoke of darkness. And everywhere you release it, where they sit, where they sleep, uh, the refrigerator handle, the door handles on, on your home, if they're still living there with you. I tell people if they don't send them a card saying, I miss you, release the anointing in the card, uh, oh, in wow. a text you want to send them. It, I'm telling you, I don't have my phone with me. But it is so powerful. It's like one of your greatest secret weapons. Why do you think he gave it to all of us? And I tell people all the time, you've been sitting on one of the greatest weapons they gave you, sit in church every Sunday, and yet that deposit has never grown. It's wow. still in there. The more you put out of the anointing, the more it grows, just like a, a deposit in the savings account. Uh, the more you invest wow. it, you invest the anointing by releasing it. I'm telling you, then they're fighting stuff that they're wearing, that they're walking in. <laughs> it's fighting against the darkness, the very darkness. I can tell you what, the demons will stop wanting to be around them just because they're being invaded by the anointing. So there are things you can do. Nothing is hopeless, okay? Not when Jesus Christ is involved. It says, remember, all things are possible with God. That mm -hmm. thing, yeah. You are dangerous when you're born again. And I know they don't teach you in church this, but mm -hmm. they should. They should have classes, uh, like anointing classes or something. Somebody should start a class up. And if you're listening right now, you have the ability to start something. Why don't you start a, a class about John 2, 27, about the anointing that abides in all of us, that Christ put that deposit in there. And if you begin to use it, you can change anything. Oh, I have a quick story to tell people about why I said the shoes. Um, this is this is a true story. And I went somewhere to speak and I was training. I trained the whole church at one time on how to release the anointing. You know how easy it is? You just teach them to do it. <laughs> you read the scripture, you tell them what the anointing is, and, and you get people to answer this question. The anointing breaks up, and every Christian will say the yoke, but they don't know what that means. 
Okay, then you explain it is it is the power of Christ's uh, anointing he operated in. The more you release it, I can go like this. Like I release, I actually feel it not just coming from my hands, but my whole body. Wow, okay. There's wow. a wave of it. <laughs> I, release, wow. I release anointing out there to break any yoke of darkness in Jesus' name. I release anointing to open up uh, the passages uh, to hear Jesus Christ better, to know him better in Jesus' name. The more you release it, you will begin to feel it leave you, which is why without even Jesus looking and that woman touched the hem of his garment, he said, I felt virtue or I felt power leave me. That was the anointing. Wow. And so this story was really quick. We had a report from somebody who kept staff to the meeting one time and said his brother all of a sudden became distant, became hateful. Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't live with them, but he lived. He was this, a real wealthy person in the city. This was his brother was wealthy. And uh, all of a sudden, he got caught off into things, became bitter and angry, uh, couldn't stand his brother, who was the believer. And then he finally lost his business, and he, and, he, and he didn't have a job. He didn't have money or anything. But he always admired these cowboy boats that his brother owned. And so his, his wife and he kept praying about what to do about it. And then they came to my meeting, and they heard me share about releasing the anointing into articles of things for the people. So they decided they were going to do a covert operation with this brother of his who was looking for work. He actually was a landscape architect. And so he finally came to his brother and said, I don't have any money. Can I mow your lawn? He's an architect, right? And he wants to just mow the lawn to have food. So they, they had prayed over the boots the night before and left them by, right inside the front door. So when this guy left, he had to pass those boots. And I mean, they laid their hands that released the anointing that breaks a yoke of darkness, according to 1 John 2, 27. Thank you for correcting me, Holy Spirit. 1 John 2, 27, release that anointing. They both did it in Jesus' name to break the yoke of darkness over my brother. Well, sure enough, he came, he mowed the lawn, and his brother said, is there anything else I can do? I really want to help you. And he said, no, I don't need your help. And then he looks over, and there's those boots sitting right inside the front door. And he goes, well... There is one thing. I really like those boots. And I wow. need new shoes. And his brother said, well, you may take them. <laughs> wow. So he took those cowboy boots. And I am not, I'm not exaggerating. One week later, this brother comes back saying, I don't know why I've been so mean to you. I'm so sorry. He said, I'm overwhelmed that these boots are the best thing I've ever owned. Oh, my I goodness. Feel so when I'm wearing them, he said, I'm happy all the time. And he said, I was wondering, would you pray with me? Just because of the wow. boots. You know? <laughs> he said, would you pray with me? And so they pray with him and said, God, open doors for him, you know, uh, to know you better, to hear you better, and to show that you love him. Give him something he had that's better than he had before. Three days later, he shows back up, still wearing the boots, saying, you're not going to believe this. He said, I had an old client call me, and I have been given all of these buildings that they're building to design all the landscape for this whole entire development. He said, I'm going to make millions. I mean, he was like crying. <laughs> he said, I've given myself back to Jesus Christ. If he cares that much for me, it's not worth it to hang on to the darkness. And I can tell you what, why did that happen? Because the anointing, broke that yoke yeah. of darkness oh, that was controlling them. And that's what they did. They just reached out to him, let him know that they care about him. And so they were so overwhelmed about, I used to tell that story a lot, so overwhelmed that no one can convince them that the anointing doesn't work. It does work. And so that did. Now he's back. This guy has been in business for some time now. And his business has only grown. His landscape business is way beyond what he ever had before. Just what they prayed. So don't give up on your family members, yeah, even though they may wow. sound crazy, act crazy. They may say they hate you. I can tell you what, that's the enemy speaking because somewhere inside of their spirit is still the, all the deposits of the love you showed them and the love that they gave to you that's still somewhere in their soul. Don't give up on them. Don't stop declaring that yeah. they will be free, but make sure you're sending Holy Spirit to pursue them yeah. because when you choose to love, I love it's in Valentine's week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you choose to love and not strike back, even though they're being hateful and mean, uh, you know, uh, I will say this. Don't ever stay in a dangerous situation. You don't want to, I'm not telling you to do that. If somebody's being horribly violent, right, raging right. violent, 
uh, you might have to call the police. And that sounds hard, but sometimes that's where people find Jesus. Mm, I'm yeah. telling you. So I'm not saying that, but I'm saying just in a situation where you know people have, are involved in things that are wrong, they're beginning to change them. You can totally do that. Okay, you take authority over the enemy who's doing this. Uh, make sure you lose any fear from yourself so that you can have clarity in hearing what God has to say. But I do know this is a thing that we have done our lives, all of my family, we've taught other people to do it. So we've been involved in situations and other people are, are been told of them. We know this works. Wow. You are powerfully and wonderfully made as a believer. And Jesus will never leave you. He will always be there yeah. with you. So don't get angry at God because your family That's members good. decided to go rogue and go crazy. You can do something about it. Do covert with Christ, take authority over that darkness, begin to have it pulled down in Jesus' name, then begin to release the anointing into their life or into their things that they wear, that they lay on. If you buy them a Coke, release it into the Coke before you give it to them. Uh, there's all kinds of things that you can do in different ways you can think of that that anointing, as long as they're wearing it or near it, will begin to break that yoke. So when people get trapped in something like that, I pretty much know people who are, there literally is a yoke put around them. They carry a yoke. It becomes mm. a burden, a dreadful burden. It will drag them down. That's why it's called a yoke. And yet the anointing breaks every yoke. It mm. breaks the yoke of darkness. And then begin to speak against the enemy, that, that, that they will be blinded, that they will have their mouth shut. And I've seen sometimes angels walk and they just go like this, zip oh, shut wow. the demon's mouth and the spirit. Wow. And they can't even give thoughts to that person because once Satan gets a hook in you, every, every time he can, he'll have an opportunity to say horrible things, crushing things against people, against their family members. And then you know what the devil will do? Then he'll beat them up with how cruel they were. Yeah. I mean, you don't win at all with the enemy. Yeah. He'll use you, okay? And then he'll use yourself against you, whatever he can do. Mm. But there is power in the blood, power in the word, power in you as a believer in Jesus Christ. Release that anointing. Speak against the darkness. Don't, my brother used to say, don't let Satan see you wince. Don't let Satan see you step back. Let him see you go boldly forward in who you are, yeah. the authority Jesus Christ gave us. And your family member will not miss being in heaven, being with you in eternity. And I've heard many people in heaven say, thank you for not giving up on me. Thank oh, you for so not giving up, for standing in the gap for me. And I want to say one more thing. When you begin to do that, do not speak bad against your family member like don't go telling people all the stuff they're doing right now well i pray for them but they're still doing this and now they're doing this you make the situation that's not a testimony by the way that's just a sad yeah. story a testimony is but you, you you have victory because of the blood of the lamb the victory and the word of your testimony is part of the victory is how victory is created that's why i tell people in this time celebrate Eat wow. cake in the face of the enemy. You know, tell you, you're piercing the heart of the enemy. When he sees you not just being strong and faithful, but actually still enjoying your life, that God put you here for a purpose, and your family member should not steal your joy, steal your plans, steal your future from you. The enemy would like to take everybody down, but I can tell you what, he's about to go down really hard, the enemy is. Good. And so much stuff will be broken off people. But you have authority, especially over your family members, even grandchildren who don't live with you. You can take authority over the atmosphere they're living in. Send the army of heaven in there. Send the Holy Spirit in there. And every time you visit them, make sure you release the anointing in their home. And even without you being there, this is the thing about the anointing. It will never wear off. And you oh, can't like watch it all. And oh, it wow. will never get old. <laughs> That's good. Kat. It'll never get old. So that's why it says in the word, 1 John 2, 27, it abides in you. There you so, go. <laughs> there you go. Now, can I have just one question about this? And then you said a number of times, don't give up, don't give up, don't give up. And which I, that's awesome to know that that's the, that's the instruction. And then at one point you said, do it for at least a week. Do that, do that. Um, and so my question is kind of in a time factor, do, can two people seemingly do the same uh, prophetic, not just acts, but they do that. They send the host, they send the anointing, they do all those things. And one person might get a breakthrough in a week and the next person might take six months. Or yeah. what would you say about that? 
I would say absolutely. It depends on the will of the person. Uh, okay. It depends on the nature and the will of that person. If they're more, even in the natural, even in the natural before they got involved in this stuff, if, if they were a really strong-willed person, it might take a little bit longer for them them to give uh, give in to the Holy Spirit or give in to uh, the thoughts then that are being put in there by the army of heaven, by their own angels, you know. Once you break that stronghold off of somebody, it does say that our weapons, they are mighty to the pulling down of strongholds, which tells you those strongholds are they're demonic beings trying to control the mind, uh, the appetite, uh, what they what people see, what they watch, what they get involved in. That's what a stronghold is. Most people walk through the walk through the day, and every now and then the enemy will come against them or something. You know, every now and then. But then there's some people who God has a very divine destiny for that the enemy sets on purpose a stronghold, which means several demonic beings are assigned to that person. Mm bombard them or drag them off into doing things get them upset get them angry when they are pulled down when they're pulled down away from them that impact that continual bombardment will stop it will stop it's very powerful to see that happen in the spirit so it's just knowing what to do yeah. yes because of the nature of, of a person or their will but this is what god says to me god says i love strong-willed people Oh, and I'll really? tell you why, because they may be even on the wrong track, but when I get them and I get them where I want them to be, nobody or nothing will ever pull them off that track. That's so good. So, so knowing you have a strong-willed child, that's probably God made them that way. Wow. You may have to pray for a little bit more to, as they grow up and you're shaping. I tell people you're not raising children, you're shaping souls for the kingdom. So, uh, the soul, so much about the soul, almost everything we go through, that's why it's talked about. It's called the heart. Because it's the okay. core of your being. Your soul is actually inside your spirit man is part of it. So your soul, your spirit man, and then your body. Uh, you are a living soul. And guess what? What you say right now in your own life, even in the next minutes, what mm. you say, choose to say every day will impact your own soul and the soul of everybody around you. Okay. Wow. So rather than yelling and screaming at your family members who are doing these crazy things, it's so much more powerful just to say, I can't approve of what you're doing. And I know it's not right. And you need to consider what you're doing. But I want you to know I love you. It's always important to say that you love them because that begins to pierce the enemy. The enemy does not want anyone to love. Mm. And I'm not saying like, because I'm not saying that you, that you should stand and let you beat, beat you up either. I'm not saying that. <clears throat> I'm saying one of the, your other greatest weapons is love. It says in the Bible, it is the strongest thing God made. And when you say, I love you to people, it actually goes to a special place in their soul. And it will they will hear those words over and over and over, even with the assault of the enemy. That they The enemy, at one point, will not be able to convince that person that they are not loved. And that is one of the number one weapons the enemy does is make you, once he gets you isolated to the drugs or the alcohol, he'll begin to tell people nobody loves you, nobody cares about you. But if you've made deposits into that person, that's what the Holy Spirit will begin back, bring back to their memory. Nice. So nice. it does matter what you say, and nice. it does matter what you do in your life, because every day we either demonstrate the power of God or we demonstrate and manifest the assaults of the enemy against us and others. Yeah. And that, that's so. been very impactful to me when you've taught this, and other people have taught this too, not only you, Kat, but yes. where they'll say, and some people will say, well, go to the courts of heaven and do business with God, but then they'll say, but don't come back and just start bad-mouthing the very people you were just praying. Yeah. And I'm thinking, right. now, why didn't I think of that? You know, so because we're so tempted to say, oh, look what they're doing now. Yesterday yes. they didn't, you know, but you're saying don't use those lips and, and tongue. Well, you're, being double, right? well, you're being double-minded, right, yeah. Steve? That's double-minded. Yeah. And it says if you're double-minded, you will get what from the Lord? Nothing. 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 <laughs> so don't bring all your, all your efforts. And you might not see anything like that day or the next day, but I will promise you this. There are things happening in the unseen realm that you cannot see that are so powerful and so crushing to the plans of the enemy. Number one, they can't even, they can't really believe that you're making a stand or you know how to make a stand because Satan's pretty much done whatever he wanted to in this world. That's coming to an end and actually will become isolated in, <clears throat> in areas. As I've spoken before, because of the understanding of the body of Christ, number one, coming together, loving one another, but operating the way 
God gave us the right to, and Christ gave us actually a commission to do, the darkness will be pushed back. I'm not saying it'll be wiped off. It'll be pushed back, and such freedom will come to operate in the gospel of the kingdom and in many other ways in our own lives that no one have, has experienced even in the past at all. So understanding that you're made by God for a purpose, yeah. and your words are very important to him. And it says if you ask for something, you do not doubt in your heart doubting is speaking against the very thing you just yeah. asked for uh, yeah. so yeah your words are powerful your yeah. words are powerful it says you should have whatsoever you say you should eat the food of your lips you know i could go down this long line of scriptures but those 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 mean something yeah. so when you make a stand it says stand therefore that means you're not going to go back don't go back yeah. on what your declaration was yeah. even if they get meaner even if they yeah. get crazier you yeah. keep bombarding that's why i said at least once a week speak over the situation and if it's real serious, I would say at least once a day. I'm saying maybe Good. take five minutes, ten minutes. I'm not saying you have to pray all night long. Uh, God can hear your words. What you're doing is ruling. It says that we are kings and priests to our God. Where a king, a spiritual king, rules in a realm. And one of the greatest realms is you have greater authority in the spirit. Standing and declaring over your family members than anyone else. So make sure... That you're not just, you're standing, but when you're standing, you're ruling. You're doing something about it by doing covert activity, by declaring against the darkness. You're not going to tolerate the actions against your family member, that you have loved them. You're standing for their salvation to be true and that they'll be with you in eternity. These words are very powerful, not just in your own life, because every time you say them, they go in your own soul. And that gives you, you build your faith. Yeah, it says that, you know, you build yourself up in most holy faith. If you pray in tongues, make sure you also spend part of that time praying in tongues for your family member. But let me tell you, Jesus has not given up on them. And I know that the word says he desires even the vilest sinner uh, should be free. He wants them free. I know not everyone will be. I just have to say that to you. Yeah. But give every chance possible for your family member and i'll say this even if they pass away and you don't get to hear from them that was not done in vain even in the spirit at that moment of death if you have made a stand for your family member jesus has keys and that's the keys of hell death and the grave and those keys give him permission to go into that place i'm not saying if they've been dead for months and years i'm not saying that i'm saying at that moment and all of this going on around you, like right now in your life, uh, you made a stand. And God has every right to use the very words you made for your family member. But if all you do is, uh, you know, bash them all the time, or you're given, it says whatever is a good report, that's what you give. So if people say, well, what's going on with your crazy family member now? You go, they're getting healed. That's they're going to change in Jesus' yeah. name. I'm making a stand, you know, and if they don't give up, if they still want to go on and on and say, why don't you take my hand and pray for them right now? <laughs> I promise <laughs> you, they good. won't hang around you to hear a good report. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's really good, Kat. That's really good. Well, we have uh, other questions, but this was the most important question to yes. me that we've hit that it was so important. Um, let me ask this first one kind of as a cousin, a little bit to what you've been saying, but this woman named Jan asks, she works at a place where she hears, she says, I hear secular music all day long, every day at my job. Obviously she has no choice in the matter. She goes, how can I guard my ear gates when it's playing? What, what would you say to her? Oh, there is so something so simple that you can do. I do that even when I go into places, you know, um, you do very simple before you leave to go in there. You say, I lift up and do an action. I lift up my shield of faith to quench every fiery dart of the enemy. And the music, even though your ears hear it, it will not enter into your soul. Uh, this is okay. something the Holy Spirit, uh, he took me, um, you know, uh, armor by a piece of armor. Uh, even the scriptures about the armor, there's revelation on all that, which is part of the spirit force stuff yeah. that you'll be getting. Uh, the shield of faith, you know, your, your feet shod with the, uh, the preparation of the gospel piece. These are powerful things to have. We are in the army of God. It says so. It says be a good, so, good soldier. We are in the army of God on the earth. We're his army mm. on the earth. He has an army he sends from heaven. That's heaven's army that works together with us. But you yourself, you're in an army right now. And you have weapons. And part of the weapons are what you put on to wear. Mm. But one of the most usable ones I use is that shield of faith. Mm. 
Mm. If I'm going into a meeting where I know there's going to be a lot of unsafe people, you know, I don't want to go up there and slap them in the face if they're using profanity. <laughs> 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 or, or more likely than not, I would say, excuse me, but I can't let those words go into my soul. Now, most people aren't going to argue with me if I say that. You'd be surprised who does swear right. sometimes. Uh, by the way, profanity is hell's language, just so you know mm. that. Yeah, yeah, it matters that you don't use it. But like the but, but the enemy does travel. It, he uses music. He uses uh and not all secular music is bad, just so you know that. Everybody yeah. thinks if it's not bringing in the sheaves, you probably don't even know what that is. <laughs> if it's not bringing the sheaves. Our generation. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. <laughs> or I'm going to fly, you know, I'll fly away. Please, these are from, these these, these songs from 50 years ago. Now, maybe yeah. 60 years ago. Let's go take it back even further. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, uh, uh, all the powerful, and I can tell you, having lived in that whole time frame of the 50s and the 60s and the 70s, the 80s and 90s, I've heard every level of, of Christian music, and you so much better off today than you were right then. <laughs> I don't remember, I can't even remember the call letters of the one radio station we had in Jacksonville that was Christian. It was country, bless her heart. It was powerful for back then, but I wanted to fly away and find something else to listen to. But when you're in this situation, and I can tell you what, just so you know this, um, make sure you're not listening to new age music. Please don't play new age music. Know what you're listening to. Now, if you get a choice yourself of what to listen to, um, let's just say I could use Michael Jackson's example. He's in heaven, whether you like it or not. He does not sing the same songs. You have to understand that you may like an artist. This is important to say this. You may like a recording artist. You don't even know what's in the songs they're singing. If he was here right now, he'd say, please don't listen to the old music. <laughs> yeah, but some would. of those music, especially in the 60s, they carried drug-related stuff in them. Uh, they carried uh, hidden messages in them. Uh, if you're in a place where you can't stop that, please say, I lift up my shield of faith that will quench That's every true. fiery dart of the enemy in this music, and it will not affect me. If you want to, if you want to know the full thing to say, but remember to lift up your shield of faith. It literally in the spirit, you have a shield that covers or covers up your soul, and and nothing anybody's saying will penetrate that. But that isn't a one-time thing. Okay, every day is a new day. It talks about a new day. Uh, but there's sometimes that I actually use that shield of faith, and I'll walk out of a place knowing none of that stuff stayed in me. So that is what you need to do That's if you're working in a place where they play stuff over the over the music system, whatever that is. And now they can play just back in the day. They had piped in music that was they called elevator music. Yeah, which yeah. Mm -hmm. Sleep probably not. <laughs> but today, with their ability to play anything anywhere you go, even songs you would never play, yeah. lift up your shield of faith. It will quench every one of those words or hidden agendas in those words or the songs uh, that would try to affect you. That's good. I want to ask a question. I had asked Robin about celebrities as uh, Hollywood actors, and God had given me a prophetic dream. He even named a specific actress. You know who it is. In fact, I'll just tell you who it was. It was it's Gal Gadot who does Wonder Woman. Well, God told me in this dream that she was that she had an experience, is in the middle of experience of seeking God. Now it may take a generation for her to to receive, but God God gave me that as an assurance. So my question is, well. While we watch these uh, and see these actors and actresses, and Robin had made a point the other day that in our generation, all the actors knew God. They just might have chosen not to serve him, but they knew him or they knew who he was. He said this generation of actors, most have never even heard the story of God, and they have to be taught that first. So my question is, how do everything we've been talking about, the anointing, obviously most people watching this don't have any, you know, they can't give cowboy boots or they can't give a card. What, uh, what, what would you instruct people who, I know there's a lot of people who, who feel called to pray for, for many of those well-known uh, actors or celebrities or those who work with them. How would they go about interceding or declaring or decreeing for those that God puts on their heart? I would definitely, the first thing, yeah, there's actually some that I pray for all the time. And okay. there's actually, just so you know this, there is a group in Hollywood who for 45 years have wow. had a list of actors and actresses that they, they as a group pray for uh, even this, this group of people aren't just in Hollywood. There are many places. There's, there's hundreds and hundreds of people that pray over this list and they actually call out their name. It's important to always call out the name when you're praying for somebody 
uh, uh, I know Barbara, uh, I don't want to say her last name. I don't know, you know, how much we're allowed to say about people or whatever. But on this list are very well-known directors, people in the movie industry. It's Hollywood, right? So there's yeah. directors, there's script writers, screenwriters, actors, actresses, people who do special effects. There's a list of all these people. God gave them those gifts. He made yeah, them that gift. Yeah. And that's why they're powerful. That's why they're good. But he does want them to know him. And I would say the most important thing you do is declare those very words. We'll just use Mickey Mouse as an example. Which, by the way, Walt Disney is in heaven, people. Awesome. Awesome. That's good. So I always tell people, people Mickey Mouse made it to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. <laughs> so we'll just use Mickey Mouse, right? You would say, Father, I just declare Mickey Mouse will know Jesus Christ, I declare he'll know him, he'll become a Christian, uh, that he will not lose the destiny he was chosen for in Jesus' name. And I come against all the power of hell that has kept them bondage. I release the anointing into that situation that that yoke will be broken off of them. And I think this is pretty much what most of the people do that pray over a lot of people. Uh, these Most people are known. Uh, some of them are not very good at all. And I will say this, people who are a gift or have a powerful gift, the only reason they put up dark content is because that is what's inside of them. God said, I made them a gift to the people who are cold. He said, hot or cold, or whether you have you hot or cold, if you're lukewarm, I can't use you, which means I'll spew you out of my mouth. Mm. Hot is a believer operating in the gift he gave you uh, on purpose. And that doesn't mean that mean that that could be a baker, not just a singer or a preacher or a Bible ministry, whatever he made you as a that gift he gave you, you are a gift. Every good and perfect gift. That's us comes down from the father of lights. We were the little lights, the spirits living inside of him. And that's what that means. That's revelation. But, but we have the right because we are representing Jesus Christ and so to declare over certain people, of course, always. So you have to pray first and take authority over the darkness, consuming them, because obviously it is consuming them, that they'll be free from that, release the anointing on their behalf. So I release the anointing on behalf of Mickey Mouse or Barbara or whoever else is out there, uh, you know, uh, that, that, that they will know Jesus Christ because your words are powerful. They create okay something in the spirit realm uh, whether you're related to the people or not i know we did talk mainly about family members but this is true for anybody and i've seen some of these people in heaven that people had on this list to pray for wow. so yes you make a difference you absolutely make a difference and and like uh mainly what happens in hollywood the way they operated in the past was they would find people who were highly gifted get them involved in hollywood get them on drugs get them on alcohol <laughs> The first thing they would want to do is pull mm. Christ away from them. If they were a Christian, they certainly don't right. want that seen or known. If they're popular and well-liked, they don't want them to be drawn to that part of that person. Although right. there are some really good actors and actresses, lest we can say it on both sides, that are born again and are still mm. making an impact in Hollywood. Um, uh, who never even got caught into the darkness. Once again, wow. yeah. if, if you yeah. want to send somebody there and it's your child, you better be going with them. Okay. You better not let just have your child go and be involved in that area, that situation, just because it looks good for their, uh, good for their um, destiny or Correct. something like yeah. that. Yeah. You don't want that to be taken or ruined or spoiled. So make sure that's covered to make sure that Jesus is involved. And, and I, I, I talk to people all, quite often about that they've had a door open for them with a certain situation or this group, and yet they're wicked. <laughs> mm. like, you don't want to go there. God's not feeding you to the devil, okay? He didn't give you that gift. You do what you can with it for others or use it for him in any way you can, but don't sell out mm. thinking you can impact them with that gift. 99% oh, wow, yeah. of the time, that is not what happened. And I mean, I've sat in a shop in Hollywood I saw the, the warlocks and witches sitting in this place with groups of young people influencing them and, and saying things over them. And when I walked in that door, they all turned and looked at me. Really? I didn't say anything. It was a Starbucks. I walked in because it was the only place I could get a hot chocolate. But I know if I'm going to that place, I'm going to do destruction to the enemy. I walked in that door. And there was a warlock sitting at this table with these young girls. They probably were like 17, 18 years old, wannabe actresses. And he was mentoring them. 
And I walked in that door, and ooh, I just began, I released the anointing, like this cloud started coming out of me, and instantly he came, and he, he sat there, turned his head, and looked like directly at me like that. And I would not look down. I kept releasing the anointing the whole entire time. In the <laughs> Good for I you. I mean, it was pouring on me like a river. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And I, all you know what he did? He turned on like this. <laughs> he, he, he dropped <laughs> he his eyes. Anything. He couldn't say anything to the girls because of the presence of God that was in that place. And everyone in there who was a wicked walked out. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, Kat, that's amazing. There were a few people standing in line with me, and some of them were, were actors, but they were like WrestleMania people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they were believers. They had a lot. I'm not saying every one of them are, but this, this these three guys were huge. Their arms are huge. And, and they were looking around like, now they were disgusted. Uh, they were disgusted because most people who, who live or, or, or work in Hollywood understand that's just what the enemy does. But they were yeah. big. They didn't want to say nothing to this guy. They they didn't know what he would say back. I didn't care. <laughs> and all I did was release the anointing, and I was speaking under my breath. And all I know was he could not even look up. He couldn't move. He couldn't say anything the whole time. I was and I was oh, declaring man. over all those girls, breaking under my breath, breaking the yoke of darkness over every single one of them. <laughs> you know that they would be free from that, and they would step into their destiny. And these guys could hear what I was saying. Oh, you were uh, saying it loud. Me. You were saying it loud enough to actually. Be I was heard. saying, you know, well, the guy was kind of across the whole, a room, but you know, I was just saying, Father, I take power over all the power of the enemy trying to affect these girls in Jesus' name. I break that yoke of darkness over them in Jesus' name. And I look, and here's this guy sitting next to me. He's got the biggest grin on his yeah. face. <laughs> He's shaking his head. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you can be a light no matter where you go. And That's God amazing. had Margaret stop. And I said, Margaret, he I got to go in that stop, you know, to get me. It wasn't for my hot chocolate. It was because of the impact I would make yeah. over those girls' lives. Wow. And all I know is when they left, there were little darts in them that had the light of God on them. And so you make a difference by the way you live your life. But I'm not tolerating darkness anywhere near me. And that should be something you say when you wake up in the morning. Okay. Yeah. I will not tolerate darkness operating around me, against me, against my family in Jesus' name. Uh, because that's called ruling. And you're taking authority in the spirit realm before you even get anywhere. And it says, you know, if you submit yourself under the hand of God and you resist the devil, guess what I'm doing? I'm resisting him by saying those words. Guess what? He flees from you. Yeah, you can't. That th the whole thing about ruling is very interesting because all through my years, and I'm 66 now, but I would hear teaching after teaching about you don't know what authority you have in Christ, and they would say you don't know the authority you have in Christ. You know you have more authority, but nobody ever, until I met you, let's just say it that way, said you take this authority and you rule with it. I don't, yes, because do. I never got up expecting to rule that day. And I believe you do. Am I, is that true? You get up expecting to rule? I do. I go to, I rule before I go to bed. And when I get up in the morning, I'm going to rule. Well, guess what? If you're a king, let's just say in the natural, you're a king. Do you ignore your realm that you live in? Do you let an enemy come in and take over and harm people or do things? Do you let them come in and steal your stuff? No! You are a king unto your God. It says you will rule with Jesus Christ now in this lifetime and in the times to come. It is up to you to decide. Do you want to take authority? Do you want to be dangerous against hell? I don't care if you're 14 years old, sitting in a room somewhere, you're a believer, you have the right to rule by what you say and by the choices you make yourself. You can't go play in the enemy's camp. Why are you walking in there giving him ammunition against you? You're a strong believer. You know, you go to church, you give your tithes, you help people, you love people. But what are you doing besides that? Okay, you, you take these levels of authority. It says it's a, it says the violent take it by force from the enemy. That doesn't mean you have spears and guns and are killing people. That means you're ruling with the words you choose to take the authority that the Bible gives you, that Jesus gives you, and you're speaking them into the spirit realm where that's where you rule. We can't go in this physical realm. That's what most people want to do. They like to go wipe everybody out and just get rid of them. But you know, uh, it doesn't matter if you get rid of the people, the evil presence, the demonic are going to stay right where they are doing what they want to unless we decide to take authority everywhere we go and you're right i expect it to happen
I expect the enemy to run. I expect him to let wow. go. I expect him to be to, to be harmed and crushed and pushed back. That's why we have light in us. And when I see people with light blinding out of them, I know that they're ruling. It's not about how old you are, what church you go to. It depends on that. are you a blood bought believer of Jesus Christ that you have the right to not tolerate darkness and whatever you do, don't participate with it. There's a difference in participation and toleration. You're not tolerating it yet. You'll go into places and watch R-rated movies and stuff. You shouldn't be. You're going into the camp of the enemy. You're trying to mm. take authority over. Do you think they're going to listen to you? Mm. You can't play with the darkness and then try to rule over it. It says you have to be free. Free of all that stuff. When Jesus stood there and said to them, there's none of him in me. That was Jesus saying, there's none of the devil in me. There's no darkness in me. There's no sin in me. Why? Because he chose to live that way. Wow, Pat. Wow, Kat. Wow. You know, I could ask other questions, but I want to leave it at this point. I, I don't want, I want that to sink in because, you know, We've got to learn to rule. We've got to learn to do what you're teaching us to do. And you know me, I'm not just blowing smoke. I actually mean that when I say that. I am hearing every word you're saying. And goodness gracious, we need to learn to rule. We're kings to our God. I don't think in cat, I don't think we've been trained. I was never trained that we're kings and to our God. We I've are. seen the scripture. The scripture says we're kings and priests unto our God. And you go, okay, that's nice. We're kings. And that's all it ever was, was a nice sounding scripture. It didn't and yet, carry and yet, the, 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 yeah. Jesus did share the gospel. But what he talked about mostly was the gospel of the kingdom. A spiritual kingdom that the king of kings and lord of lords, those spiritual kings and those spiritual lords rule in that kingdom, in that spiritual kingdom. That's what he came to bring. Yes, he came for our salvation, but he came for even more than that. He expects us to take authority over this darkness by all that he gave us. And if you sit in a corner and stay afraid because fear is the enemy's greatest weapon, and all I have to say is, I choose to break that fear off of me in Jesus' name. I choose to break all deception off of me. I will not tolerate it being a part of my life anymore. I'm running my race with Jesus Christ. I will rule and reign with him in this world. I will not let anything penetrate where I live or where he sends me or control me in any way because I serve the living God and I will serve no other. And Father, right now, I pray for everyone watching right now that they be free from fear, free from deception, free from confusion in Jesus' name. And I speak the life of God, the plans of God, the power of God. Let them have revelation and live and rule and reign with you in this lifetime to make those generations coming after them even more powerful in the spirit till there's a generation that will not bow their knee, bow their words to the enemy. But we, as long as we're here, will be a threat and a danger to the plans of the enemy that they will fail, fail, fail. And only what Jesus Christ wants is what will be in Jesus' awesome. name. Amen. Wow. Wow, Kat. Thank you. Thank you. What an amazing day. What an amazing teaching. And I'm, like I said, I'm not blowing smoke. I'm really mean. And make this sure was... you're having fun. Yeah. yeah. You will become weary if all you're doing is paddling. Yeah. You need to have fun in your That's life. Good. That's good. Because Please. you need a balance. On earth as it is in heaven, heaven is 50% fun, 50% awe and splendor and amazing Father, so Son, and Holy Spirit. So he good. has a plan for you. And very you good. choose to take that plan and start very even good. this very moment making a difference with your life. Amen. Good. Amen. Amen. Well, Kat, I want people to get your books. You've got two books that are done, I think, uh, and you're working on a third, if I'm saying that right. Tell people, I see revealingheaven.com. Is that where they get your books? That's uh, right there. Yes. Uh, here's my book, too, right here. It says number two on it. It also has the wing of the living creature. That's when my whole head was pink. They're so it was good. so pink and ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, Revealing Heaven 1 and 2. Um, you can go, well, you can go to our uh, revealingheaven.com. That's our own store. And that's where we show our events. And that's where all of our products are, like the I Don't Do Demons Cup. Okay. I don't do demons with a lightning bolt that took them out of heaven. <clears throat> and so that's what our commission is. It is to reveal and create heaven on earth. And 
my greatest desire is to bless my king, Jesus Christ. He is my number wow. one above all else. And what he says is what I say. And what he does is what I do. And that is my, my desire for you is to be so free of any fear or anything holding you back. You were made for a purpose in this world. And he chose and timed your birth on the earth. You're not, you are not a mistake. And remember, he holds us in his hands. And we will all, if your desire is to fulfill that purpose he has for you, make sure when he asks you to do something, you do it, mm, okay? Good. I have catcur.com. Yeah. That's a spiritual platform where you can get all kinds of uh, uh, revelation. And there's uh, Q&A sessions. I think there's probably some interviews on there. We're about to upgrade that one to have a lot more content. But um, And it's the only place you can give online. I always tell people, don't believe these fake places out there saying it's me asking for money for some country or for some project or plan or something. That's not me. Okay. Now, I do want to say something. If I travel, I personally never charge people to hear the revelation that God has me give. Not in any of our own meetings. We usually have four meetings a year in our own city. And there's never going to be a charge to come. But if I'm invited by another ministry or place to come and speak for them, they may charge a fee. And let me tell you, if a thousand people are coming to their place, that means they have to hire more security, more ushers, yeah. more people to clean up, more people in the parking lot, and they have a right to charge that fee. Yeah. So that's not me, that's not me saying I'm not going to charge. In another location, uh, if they have to charge a small fee to register, that's probably also to make sure you have a seat and they don't have 300 people saying that's they're good. coming and they're not. So the, the gospel, salvation is free, but it does cost money to That's preach true. the gospel yeah. and have a place to keep it and, and present it. And I just want to clear that up. Uh, so, but I myself, God won't let me charge That's you good. for this revelation.